So one of these persons who has spent his or her life in the darkness of the depths of the cave, looking at appearances, is snatched and forcibly removed first to, to, to encounter these objects that are projected there, who are more real than the appearances, and then further outside the cave, where there are the real objects of the real world, darkness of the cave, by the image, versus the light the, um, of reality, of the world, of the true world. Now imagine the arduousness, imagine the trauma of someone who has spent their lives in the cave, in darkness, it's all you know, your life, your, your, your eyes are accustomed to the darkness, right? And you go outside. It will take days for that person to even look up to the sun. This is a metaphor for the arduousness of knowledge, for the arduousness of truth, for the fact that it takes, well, it's suffering, basically, that goes with this process. It's not easy. Now, imagine what happens when this person who has gone outside comes back. Comes back changed, because this person has now knows, has changed inside, has changed his soul, right? In many ways, he, perhaps, he has ordered truly now his soul, reason, spirit, appetites, and his reason now has been used to really know the truth. And the truth, again, it has to do, you know, good, it has to do with true, false, good, evil, everything that guides our being and action, right? This is what truth is, in this sense. Now, when this person goes back, right, Imagine how he will be welcome. Well, we know Socrates' own story and how he was welcome. Right? How his life ended. In many ways, he's a, an emblematic figure of this pursuit and of coming back, although he would never have said that he has been outside. So, who is this person? Right? This is the famous philosopher, philosophia, lover of wisdom who comes back into, you know, after pursuing truth and shaping his soul according to the truth, comes back and tries to impact the society, tries to impact his, you know, neighbors, his, his, uh, the, the, the city, by ordering it according to what now he knows is the right order. He now knows the right order, the truth, how things are. And comes back to, 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 to share that and to show it on the society. Now, clearly, he will be rejected, mocked, and so on, and we know the story of Socrates. But he, this is the famous philosopher king that you hear about, uh, talk about when we talk about uh, Plato. Right? It's not because, you know, someone who has a degree in philosophy needs to be uh, president. That's not the idea. Right? It doesn't matter if you have a degree in philosophy. But matter, you know, that doesn't grant you, that doesn't uh, mean that you have pursues this path. It's a path that is not guaranteed, it's not granted, that he will actually get this, this far and so on. Of course, this is a brief introduction. I encourage you to actually read Plato and then study and so on. Uh, there, it's, it's, it's fascinating, but also uh, it takes close reading, right? As any serious thing does. So, now you understand what how difficult it will be, and how rare it will be, for this ideal CV to actually be established. He says, well, it's only when a philosopher who has shaped his soul according to the truth comes back and then orders the city, who knows how to order the city, and then will rule, basically an iron rule here, because he, the others will not know how to order the city. It's him, it's the few who will know. Dangerous ideas here. But, you know, uh, this is uh, part of the charm. It's only if this, by, any, by, by chance, such a philosopher king is given the reins of a city, Plato says, that this city can be arranged, ordered in the right way, ordered, 
in the right way. So what is this idea of city? Well, we could call it, you know, city ruled by uh, the philosopher king, but it's not really there, right? Because the rulers, the, guard, the, the ruler guardians are not one, but several. It's the philosopher king who kind of orders the city, but then he appoints, you know, he chooses, selects, educates. Very important. These children are selected when they're young and then educated for a specific path based on tests and so on. So, if you recall that these ideas, good. But, uh, you have to follow his, his line of thought. And then select the guardians, who would be soldiers, and then the workers or producers or whatever. Okay. So what is this, this, this uh, regime? This regime perhaps is you know, the regime of the philosopher king, but actually it's sort of an aristocracy. An aristocracy meaning here the rule of the few who are the best. Aristoi. Aristoi it means the best. So aristocracy, its original term, its original meaning of the word means few and the best, right? Which always is kind of corresponds uh, the best are fewer, right? So if this is the, the ideal regime, which he said, well, it's possible, well, why not? Why not, in theory? Um, but, probably it will not last, he says. It's possible, but probably it will not last. So what will then happen next? If this doesn't last, how will it decay? Right. Well, there are many ways in which it can, uh, many reasons for which it can decay, but Plato goes through a succession of um, Stages of decay, just to give an example, right? And but and that those stages are are listed in your uh, in your book. They're listed in your um, uh, textbook fragment. So look look them up there. But what I ask you to notice there, and to understand what they mean, is to notice that each of these stages, each of these regimes, are actually varieties in which the soul can be disturbed. And just to pick up from here, I will use uh, my notes to, you know, briefly talk about each very, very briefly. So the first one, the next one, uh, aristocracy will devolve into a timocracy. T I M. Uh, what is a timocracy? Is the rule of the soldiers, of the spirited ones, right? You can see how this is going, right? The guardians, the rulers, are not selected properly, which leaves the rule open to those who have the force to take it, which is the uh, democracy. But remember that you know those led by the spirited part also have a virtue, which is the virtue of courage. So it's a rule that is very you know warlike, Sparta-like, and so on. So it has good parts, it has bad parts, right? It's no longer ruled by those who uh, are, are ruled by wisdom, but still has good parts because it's a courage-driven rule, and so on. Timocracy then uh, will devolve into uh, oligarchy, right? which is, you know, when the soldiers rule, the city will be very belligerent, aggressive, will conquer probably a lot, and will collect spoils, which will start making some of these soldiers lazy, and start pushing them to enjoy the spoils of war. So you will have a rule of the, fu of the few, oli, or oligo, which is the few, but the few who are not the best, are story. So oligarchy is the rule of the few uh, who have access to wealth, and, but are no longer, do, do not longer have the discipline of the timocrats, which was courage, discipline. So these are, this is oligarchy, they pursue wealth, perhaps they have some of the, you know, skills necessary to pursue wealth, you know, you have to be determined that in a way you have to have a certain program and commitment to pursue wealth, uh, say Donald Trump or whatever. So, um, interestingly, many of us, many today, admire the oligarchs in this sense. So they have some skills, right? But this will not last. 
Remember, notice that this is a, a, a transition from reason to spirit, to spirit and appetite to appetite. The parts of the soul, of the self. This will devolve into democracy. What? Democracy? Evil? Bad? Not good? Well, what's democracy? It's the rule of the many. Demos. Of the plans of the many. But the many, remember, in the sense of and statistically, right? in the city, the many are those who are mostly follow their appetites. Or not. It's not wisdom, it's not an understanding that is, and it's not a trained understanding and a developed understanding that, that rules them. And once they get to rule in a city, it's basically a rule that follows the appetites. You know, you see how from the spirits, we went to the appetites, you know, read here to the many who are angry at the oligarchs, by the way. And what they want is what? Satisfaction of appetite, and which means what? Complete freedom. Here's where freedom is. Complete freedom in the sense of lack of rules. In satisfaction of what I want. But what I want is not necessarily good. Well, obviously this will devolve into quite a disastrous situation approaching anarchy. And remember, democracy is in the sense of direct democracy, the Greek sense, everybody has power, not representative democracy, or uh, as we have uh, in many countries today where there are checks actually on the unbridled will of the masses, of just pursuit of whatever whim I have today. So, once there's chaos, you need what? Order! And in order to have order, you will look to find someone who can put order, and this is how you get to the descent, the final, the final stage, which is a descent to tyranny. And you have these stages in your textbook, so even if you can't um, decipher everything, you'll find it there. So the tyranny is the rule of the one person who really follows unbridled appetites, because now, not only he can do whatever he wants, the, the masses follow him, and he commands everyone, so literally, here at democracy, at least people have checks in the sense of the other people who checks on that. I, I can't do everything because my neighbor is going to hit me. The tyrant, which is the lowest of the law, and the opposite of good rule, yeah, he is the one where appetites run amok. It's a long, long discussion where Plato also talks about, shows how, through the mouth of Socrates, also shows how how, unfor how unhappy this person is. Notice that at the depths of this decay, we have a soul that is completely disordered, where the appetites rule, instead of what is highest in man, but, but the opposite of knowing of that part in us that guides us in the right way. If, if uh, cultivated, that guides us towards truth, the good, and so on. It is a completely disordered soul. Injustice is here. Injustice is here. So, this was a brief, well, not maybe not so brief in our in next lecture, it will be briefer um, and hopefully not interrupted by technical difficulties. But this is a still a brief overview of some of Plato's ideas and we're going to talk next about uh, Aristotle and uh, study these and pay attention to these aspects to their understanding of and their answers to uh, what is a human being, what is the best life, what is how should we live in a society right? which is a political philosophy because on your paper uh, which is coming up soon and you'll get the assignment for the paper you will be asked to compare and to use these, what you know from each of these thinkers in these brief introductions to make sense of a given text. You'll know, you'll get more. So, uh, we'll continue with a uh, lecture on Aristotle and then, uh, actually on Monday, we uh, will read from Thucydides uh, the famous Melian Dialogue. And um, well, we'll take it from there. Thank you.